the two ideas are inseparable. You can't have risk without vision. You can't have vision without risk. And, um, and the other idea that Daisy had was that actually this wasn't just going to be about... Um, it wasn't going to be like all the other programs on telly at the time. It wasn't going to exploit people. We weren't going to have a dig. We weren't either going to try and sell ideas to the viewers. We weren't. Going to, I wasn't going to be employed as a, an architect or as a designer building these people's houses. Instead, we were just going to tell the story. And in that story, if we weren't selling something, and we weren't being cynical, and we weren't exploiting people, in that story, perhaps we might find something else. And she felt that that something else might be a little bit of poetry, a little bit of lyricism, the human story, if you like. And in a, you know, it was her idea, not mine, this. And she hit the nail bang on the head with that idea. Because I think the one reason why you watch this series is because we all of us, I think, looking at Grand Designs, we, we sympathize and we understand the people and we share their journey. And we all think, in a way, it is the last great big adventure that we all might go on. Even if we're never going to build a house, we might think that one day we just might, we could. And it's that connection between us and them, caring for them, which helps us, in a way, to care for the building. It's very simple. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a rare thing to find. It's, it's, it, if you like, I suppose what it is, isn't it? It's old-fashioned storytelling, you know? Because you have your goodies and your baddies, and you've got the wicked prince and the axe man in the wood chopping the trees down, except in this case he's a goodie, not a bad. Um, 